Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of the Format Podcast Live Wednesday Night Edition. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. As you can see, it's myself and uh, my main man, the Transformer, was good, Transformer. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on, uh, Jason? What's going on? I'm maintaining, man. Maintaining. Yes, Got some sir. good topics for you tonight. Um, definitely, as usual on Wednesday, we're going to knock out the uh, NFL pick em. We're going to make our picks for the upcoming uh, week of NFL football. Uh, we're going to talk some Michael Parsons, who can't seem to freaking keep his mouth shut or whatever right. comes out of his mouth. He can't seem to get that right. I don't know what's going on with him. Uh, of course, as you saw from the thumbnail, we are going to talk about Bronny James, who, well, he's just not good. But we're going to add some more. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna add some more label, uh, some more uh, layers to that. Definitely have some uh, interesting comments from uh, the mayor of Wade County himself. So definitely uh, stick around and look forward to that. And then finally, we're gonna finish up with uh, Caleb Williams, number one draft pick in this this past uh, NFL draft, and the uh, and the Chicago Bears, and kind of talk about what's going on there because it's crazy. To get to the final topic, back to the NFL we go, and uh, we're gonna talk about Caleb Williams. Um, Caleb Williams is an interesting guy and uh, he is um, he was the number one pick in this uh, past NFL draft. Right. And. um, (laughs) Right. Right. Transformer. You're 100 percent right, man. No, he he, Caleb Williams was the uh, the number one overall pick in the last NFL draft quarterback out of USC, uh, won a Heisman Trophy there and. You know, he was regarded as the best prospect to come out since Andrew Luck, which is funny because they said that about Trevor Lawrence. But anyway, and both of them early in their careers haven't shown too much. But uh, obviously, Trevor Lawrence, he's in year four and Caleb Williams is in halfway through year one, a little past halfway. So Caleb Williams is struggling. But a big part of that is the Bears organization. Right. Um, They have uh, defensive head coach Matt Eberflus, who is not uh, not doing much to help in. Uh, in terms of um, developing Caleb as a quarterback. Uh, They clearly made the wrong hire at offensive coordinator. Um, They fired the guy they had last year, Luke Getze, who was working with um, Justin Fields, and that didn't work out. So then they they did a number of interviews, and they ended up hiring Shane Waldron, former OC for the Seattle Seahawks. That didn't work out. Uh, He was just fired uh, two days ago, if I'm not mistaken. Um, So what happens is this, right? Caleb Williams is supposed to be the guy. Everybody was so hyped and so excited. They were highly rating him. And I only heard one um, one person in the scouting community in the NFL who openly said that they didn't believe in uh, Caleb Williams. That's former NFL scout uh, Daniel Kelly, who's been on this show. He was on the show like uh, last year prior to the draft. And he said that I think he said he had a fourth round grade on Caleb Williams and he thought he was going to be a bust for a number of reasons. One of them being that he holds the ball too long and, you know, he doesn't process well downfield. He has issues with ball placement. And a lot of people were like, what? That's crazy. And uh, to this point, that's exactly what you're seeing, even though uh, the Chicago Bears have tried to put talent around him. They drafted the wide receiver that he wanted, the guy who I thought was the number one receiver coming out of the draft, Roma Dunze from Washington who I believe is an absolute stud. We'll see if he can uh, continue to develop and uh, become better than he's been so far. So I think part of that is coaching and scheme. But yeah, Caleb Williams is, uh, well, he's having some problems. Uh, for instance, um, last week, the the Bears played against, well, okay, so this is this is some B-roll. But last week, the Bears played against the the um, New England Patriots, who are one of the worst teams in the league, Caleb Williams was sacked nine times, right? And if you actually go back and look at uh, the footage of Caleb Williams being sacked nine times, some of that was just the pressure coming unblocked, but some of that was also Caleb Williams just holding the ball too long, which he has a tendency to do, right? That was one of the major knocks on him coming out of college. They say that he doesn't play well in structure and that he is um, always looking to – he's got happy feet in the pocket. He's always looking to get out and make the hero play. Now, he has an ability to – he has a great ability, which is escapability, but that same escapability does not look nearly the same in the NFL as it did in the collegiate ranks. Obviously, NFL defenders are much, much uh, faster and bigger. So, uh, yeah, so Shane Waldron, the OC, he got fired the other day, which I really don't understand Matt Nagy firing the offensive coordinator because – 
Matt Nagy could win every game for the rest of the year and he's still going to be gone after this season. So I get that he was, you know, working self-preservation and trying to um, uh, save his own job. But I mean, for what? You're going to be gone. But anyway, uh, Caleb Williams, I believe, is the most sacked quarterback in the NFL this year. So he's really struggling. So before I get to some uh, commentary from uh, the odd couple with uh, uh, Rob Parker and Kelvin Washington and their producer, uh, Rob Guerra, uh, I wanted to know what were your thoughts on Caleb Williams and what you've seen so far, G? I know he's a DMV guy, so you probably want to rep for him. But um, what, what, what are some of your thoughts of uh, uh, Caleb Williams and his early struggles in the NFL? I mean, uh, the Bears haven't been good in so long, right? Um, we, we saw what they did with Justin Fields and getting him out of there to bring Caleb in, which was supposed to have been like new, fresh start. Um, mm -hmm. Put a lot of talent around him, and the Bears still look like the Bears. <laughs> they do. So, so it's um, it's it's not much. It's not much to pick from this one. Um, kind of knew what we was getting into when we watched him at USC. We saw him have mm -hmm. meltdowns. That's um, right. We seen him play real, real streaky, but then he has a tendency to, to to melt down. And I think this is what we're seeing just on uh, the, the professional level. This is him melting down and not being able to um, change. If you're getting sacked, what, five times? Nine times? Nine times. <laughs> yeah. Nine times? Well, That's right. maybe we, we need to throw, throw the ball a little quicker. Um, I agree. So some of that could be on the offensive coordinator. Some of it could be on his decision-making process or, or however he carry it. Um, but I don't really have too much for Caleb, man. Like, I'm not really – I wasn't really a big fan. Um, I think mm -hmm. they would have they would have did better with a second year Justin Field with the support that they put around Caleb. Caleb, I agree. Yeah, yeah. So that that's how I look at that. Um, I think the Bears just the organization just shouldn't have bid again. Um, that's and, right. Steve, wow. it's so funny that you say <laughs> yeah. that, bro. It, it no, Steve, you're 100 percent right, and a lot of people don't acknowledge that, but it's funny. I know you remember. Two years ago, um, when uh, Notre Dame went out to uh, USC in the season finale and Caleb just was making the entire Notre Dame defense look foolish and literally won a Heisman Trophy off of that incredible performance. Then last year in the midseason game, uh, Caleb and USC came to uh, South Bend to play against Notre Dame. Notre Dame picked him off three times, I think, including a pick six, uh, sacked him four or five times, really punished him. And since then, he has never been the same. Steve is 100 percent right. He finished um, the he finished the rest of his college season horribly, um, really getting punished. And that was when uh, after one of the games, you saw him jump into the stands and cry in his mother's arms. Now, I, we've heard I, I've mentioned it before. We've heard the stories of all time great players in different sports crying and being so desolate at losing because winning meant so much to these guys. But um, this was kind of different, right? We know Caleb is a guy that's kind of different in the ultimate masculine uh, uh, sport of football, the ultimate supposedly alpha male testosterone fueled sport. Caleb Williams is a guy that walks around with a bright pink cell phone cover. He has, he has his nails painted. And so it's kind of, he's, he doesn't seem to be a guy that really, um, radiates that masculine energy in terms of leadership as the most important position in sports, right? So it's um, it's kind of weird. But yeah, uh, Notre Dame uh, beat the brakes off of Caleb Williams and USC in that game last year. And Caleb has not been the same in terms of his uh, his ability and his, uh, his greatness since, right? Um, that basically ruined his opportunity to repeat as Heisman, um, Heisman Trophy winner. And since then, we just... You know, we haven't seen anything. Now, listen, a lot of all-time greats have had difficulties in their rookie years in the NFL, right? Peyton Manning only won 13 games, set the uh, rookie record for interceptions. I think he had 28 interceptions as a rookie. Um, now, that was a little different because back then you could hit quarterbacks, you could hit receivers, et cetera. So a little different, but still, he set the record for interceptions as a rookie. Um, uh, Joe Ma not Joe Montana, John Elway got benched as a rookie. Terry Bradshaw benched as a rookie. Troy Aikman won one game and was benched as a rookie. And all these guys are Hall of Famers, right? So nobody's saying that Caleb Williams is going to be a bum or doesn't have the ability with proper coaching and proper team construction to be a very good, if not special NFL player. Nobody's doubting that. But it, it is problematic um, where he is right now in terms of his position as um, in, in the hierarchy uh, as an NFL quarterback. So 
let's go ahead um, and we're going to play uh, a few clips from the odd couple and then we'll get back and talk about it. So I'm going to play one. We're going to come back and talk about it and then I'll play the other one. Yeah, so uh, you know the world famous show Waddle and Sylvie, ESPN it's been around Chicago. For a long They've time. been around yeah. forever. Two of the most respected members of the media in that area. So Sylvie put out a tweet about an hour after the news broke that Shane Waldron was being fired as the offensive coordinator, and in it he said two things: one, that several Bears players went to Eberflus and GM Ryan Poles and said, "Hey, it's not working with Waldron." We got to move on, replace him, maybe not fire him, do whatever you got to do. He's not doing a good job with the offense. But then he added there at the end of his tweet, also, several Bears veterans believe that Tyson Bajan should be starting at quarterback over Caleb Williams. Mm. So Tyson Bajan. So think about this. This is the guy, Caleb Williams, who's supposed to be uh, the the most highly touted uh, quarterback prospect since Andrew Luck. And you're talking about Tyler Bajan. These are veterans on his team saying Tyler Bajan should be starting over him. That's that's not good. Gee, what are your thoughts so far on what we've uh, what what we just heard uh, regarding uh, Caleb yeah, and I, the Bears? Yeah, I heard. Uh, um, I watched. I actually read the article that we was talking about the Bears players going and, and you know mm-hmm. asking them to you know, bench Caleb and mm-hmm. put in some other guy I never heard of. Um, <laughs> Nobody likes to lose, bro. Like, especially when you believe you should be winning. Um, but it's Caleb, bro. Like, we all knew this was gonna happen. Like, everybody knew this was happening. I don't, I don't, I mean, maybe not everyone, right? Because the Bears organization thought that they was making a, a power move. And mm-hmm. at the end, it's just you know, it's just pretty bad, man. Like this Bears football. <laughs> Yo, hey, hey you want to know interesting, G? Tyson Bajan, the backup quarterback that many of those veterans lobbied for, is alumnus of Shepherd University in West Virginia. I heard <laughs> about that kid. You know what? I heard about him. I heard about him. They yeah, I think he set all types of D3 records, D3 passing yeah. records. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought he was with the Rams. I thought he went to the Rams. I didn't know he was with the Bears. Yeah, I know he was there. Last, I know he was with the Bears last year. I don't, I don't know. Um, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Yep. No, he's been with the. He's been with the Bears. It's well, he got drafted last year. So, last but yeah, year, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, he won a national championship with them. There you go. So, yeah. Shepherd College University. But, but yeah. Um. So yeah. So this this whole thing, you know, you're seeing that that clearly shows that you're having difficulty in terms of um you are having difficulty in terms of uh, being the quarterback and connecting with the guys in that locker room. If you've got veterans saying, Hey, nah, bench this guy and put the other guy in at least that that's how I see it. Now we could also look at it as veterans are saying like, uh, I don't know how much time left I have in the league. So I need somebody better to come in and play to try and maybe extend this for me or, you know, so that that's one thing. Um, they like what, what, um, who was it that said that? I think it was uh oh man McKnight, Indiana coach, basketball coach. Oh, Bobby Knight, the general. Bobby Knight, Bobby yeah. Knight. He said, There's nothing like benching a player. He said, That shit make them play harder. Like, if you have That's an true. underperforming player, you sit his ass on the bench. Get him in gear. <laughs> get him in gear. <laughs> So he I mean, is that. it a bad thing? Um, we about to see with the coach, right? Because they benched their uh quarterback. If he well, comes out, all out, they bench Flacco. They did. Bench yeah, they bench Flacco to bring the other kid back. So we'll 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 see. Um, we'll we'll see what Anthony Richardson ends up doing. But that that's a good point. I really didn't like it because to me that signals like, to me that's like football, man. It's like it's an adrenaline, not an adrenaline thing. It's a, it, it's an alpha thing. It's a testosterone thing. It's a it's a real thing. And I think. When you do that, if he's not hurt, man, to me that's cowardly. And if you're Caleb and you're cool with that, that means you're a coward too. I don't, I don't have a whole lot of respect for that. Um, go out there and compete, even if you suck, you suck and and continue to learn like like Peyton Manning and and those other guys did, and then you come back next year and you're better. But this is not all on Caleb either. Like we talked about it, he clearly had, you know, he's had lousy coaching. Uh, the the former OC 
who apparently um, it was said that the the players from Seattle when he would coach there before said he's not that good. Um, other players, uh, I just got a, a text from uh, one of my guys with an article saying that uh, players on this Bears team were saying he's too nice of a guy and they were talking about the offensive struggles. So here's the thing, right? If we know that Caleb holds the ball too long, why wouldn't you get a guy that brings in like more of a West Coast system so he can get the ball out of his hands quicker? Right. It, it identifies the reads. It identifies the reads faster and allows him to get rid of the ball quicker, gets him in a rhythm as a passer. And then all those short completions help to build his confidence so that when it's time to go over the top, he can do that. I mean, that's my thought. I don't, I don't understand why you would. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Right. Yeah. Until it doesn't. Till it doesn't. There you go. It might I be think him, the- though. It, it just could be him, man. Like it could be. I, I haven't watched the Bears though. games. I don't think they are um, worth the watch, honestly. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, we'll I, I think it's too early to know, and I think he's too talent. He's got too much physical talent, so we'll see what he does or does not end up being. But uh, he definitely needs. Um, <laughs> he definitely needs, uh, in my estimation, like better coaching, right? Because we know in the in the modern NFL. If you get the right coaching, and we've seen it all the time, guys change schemes and all of a sudden they turn into world beaters. Like nobody thinks Trent Green was any good, but he was killing when he was playing in that um he was in that same scheme that the Rams used with Dick Vermeil, right? When Dick Vermeil left yeah. the Rams and went to the Chiefs, Trent Green started killing. Same thing with Priest Holmes when he left Baltimore and went to the Chiefs, right? Sometimes the scheme is all you need to make the difference. So we got to see what Caleb Williams gets. And I also think, in fairness, that the Bears organization was paralyzed with fear over the possibility of missing out on Caleb Williams, watching him go somewhere and get busy because they've missed out on other elite quarterbacks in the past as well. I think I think they missed out on um, C.J. Stroud as well. So, I mean, they've missed out on some some really good guys. And it's like, damn, but they need a lot. They need a lot. Um, definitely transformer. Uh, need a coach, need a line, need a vet to get that locker room together. Yep, uh, I'm with you. They need all that. So, you know, hopefully they can uh, figure out a way to make those things happen. And then then we'll see. But um, here's some more commentary from the odd uh, couple. And uh, then we'll come back and wrap it up. But um, this, this was good. I, I enjoyed this. Check it out. When you start to look at some of his numbers now, it starts to resemble that this is what he believes. He's 32nd in completion percentage, 55.5%. Yards per attempt are this low. He's at 4.9. He's sacked 18 times, including nine just this past previous game. He's tied for 31st in passing touchdowns with zero, Rob. Uh, and 30th in total QBR at 21.2 uh, during this losing streak specifically that he's been on this losing streak. All these numbers are for that. Um, so you look at him holding the ball. You look at him all of a sudden holding the ball too much in college. And this is what they're saying he does. He tries to oh, – and you can get away with this in college because you're just better than everybody. And those those separations are much larger between your receiver and the defensive backs in college because you're SC and you're playing some schools that aren't that great with a bunch of guys who are going to often become sales insurance agents. Not in the NFL with pros who are good. The second half of this is you remember hearing little weird things about, like, he doesn't necessarily – he maybe not get along with the guys. It's kind of a different – guys he's a little bit aloof and he's kind of a different cat when it comes to leadership uh, ability and to me that might scream loud too when you have veterans with a talented young player who are already kind of ready to give up sometimes talent just ain't it where they'll go all right look he's struggling right now we're not winning but you know what we like to do we believe in his leadership he'll be all right eventually when you start getting guys ready to do this already rob we're not we're what a little over halfway through the season to me that screams that there's something more than just getting sacked there's something more than offense not scoring to me this might also scream something to leadership something to locker room issues yeah, I totally disagree. I think this is what teams do. They panic. This is the third number one overall pick that's had a coaching change in their first year. This happens often because there's an adjustment that has to be made. And you can't listen to just players, a handful of players in the locker room because there's a pop, it's not a popularity contest. That's why you have a GM. That's why you have a coach. That's why you have other people. It just can't be because you like somebody or you. I, we all work with people that we don't all like 
or feel like we have a connection or a vibe with, but it doesn't mean that they can't do their job. And I think this is where people get caught up in it. We talk about it all the time. It's not just about uh, feelings and whether or not he's cool or I want to hang out with him or he talks to me or whatever it is. People are all different. And if you're winning, none of that ever comes up. Nobody would ever talk about those things because it's only when you lose that you could try to find a rhyme or reason why. Uh, and, 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 and I think that's what you have to be careful of because losing brings out where people are ready to, 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 to throw the blame on somebody or try to figure out uh, it's because he painted his nails in college. It's right. because, you know, like all these other reasons other than maybe, A, he's a rookie learning how to play in the NFL. B, they have a terrible offensive line. C, their offensive coordinator is not great. There's a lot of reasons, and I'm not uh, absolving him or saying he's not to blame or he doesn't have to play better. But I saw some moments moments there. This is not a season long where he couldn't get anything going. Um, gee, thoughts, man. Yeah, I agree with him. You can't you can't really hold this guy or any of these newer quarterbacks to the same standard as we we hold like those tier one quarterbacks, right? That's the difference. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But at the same time, he is being drafted to a team and the unknowns are there. And so mm-hmm. yeah, I, I agree with those guys. I mean, not the first first time we've seen a, a quarterback that's number one pick and um, close to bust, right, um, mm-hmm. or knocking on bust door, I should say that. Um, Facts. But, but yeah, like you you have to win every Sunday. You have to, you have to at least make an effort of, to win, right? Um, mm-hmm. Some would say getting sacked nine times, could have threw the ball away. Like, you right. know, Right. He could have did anything other than just take the sack. And so mm-hmm. is that a sign of him just submitting? Um, is that a sign of him just like, you know, not really caring? I don't know, man. Like, I, I mean, it's – I saw it coming. It's kind of like comma, right? Like, you move with Justin Fields out. Yeah. You draft a whole nother quarterback. You get what you deserve. Because <laughs> that pick could have went somewhere else. Right. Or – or you trade the pick and load up because everybody was so everybody was so hype on Caleb Williams. Oh, he's the next best thing, blah, blah, blah. You know, you could have gotten a load for that pick. But, you know, I think the Bears, like I said, they were paralyzed by fear of, of missing out and not getting that, uh, not getting that quote unquote generational player. So I, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I think it's uh, I would have traded the pick. If it was me, I would have traded the pick and just loaded up and made that team better. And I would have fired Eber Flutes after last season and brought in a new coach. Yeah, I think on uh, you know, I, I hate the the kind of quote Mike Tomlin right now, but he said, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's about coaching, right? Mm-hmm. At the end of the yeah. day, it's about coaching. Yeah. If the player's yeah. not playing the way they're supposed to, it's on the coaches. It's the coaches. Mm-hmm. To job to make sure that these players are ready to go every Sunday. And they mm-hmm. have a plan in front of them where, you know, with a contingency plan, in the event that something goes wrong, it's up to the coaches, like point blank period. Now, the players still have to execute, but this is a number right. one, this is a number one pick. This is your, you know, this is who you're building your franchise around. Like, this, I don't know, man. Like, it's, it's, it's trouble in paradise again. It's another mm-hmm. year, the Bears on their best bullshit again. Um, that <laughs> surprised me. Facts. Hey, Transformer, you, you make good points in what you're saying. However, it just occurred to me, you as a Packer fan have the ability to say that because you had Favre, you could let you could afford to let Aaron Rodgers sit for three years. You had Aaron Rodgers, and then you could afford to let um, Jordan Love sit for three years. So most teams don't have that. Like, I, I totally get what you're saying, and I don't disagree, but you're a bit biased you know, not biased, but you you have a little bit of skewed viewpoint on this based on who your team is and the incredible level of success they have had over the last three decades in in developing QBs. So, like, there's that. We got to remember that part. But, no, I I do agree that um, uh, that MVPs, Ben's been given time to learn and grow. And I get it. I'm not mad at that. The problem is, um, to your point, most people are impatient. And secondly, this probably wouldn't be as big a deal 
if um what's my man's name if caleb wasn't so highly touted as being this generational guy if he was just a really good quarterback coming out okay cool maybe you pull that off but for him to have supposedly been what they said they needed to get him out there and a lot of people a lot of people don't agree with letting quarterbacks sit i do but a lot of people don't um and g makes a great point there as well neither lamar nor um mahomes nor was josh allen number one overall pick i don't think so right Mm, i don't know i don't think so but but the point is neither lamar nor mahomes were number one overall picks and think about it if you're baltimore you could have afforded to let um lamar sit why because you had a super bowl champion in front of him right um if you if you're patrick mahomes you could have if you're uh kansas city you could have afforded to let patrick mahomes sit why because you had a multi-time pro bowler in front of him so i get it um Okay, there you go. I didn't think Josh Allen was number one. So, you know, there's a a little bit of um, different uh, uh, expectations when you're talking a number one overall pick and, again, a guy that's supposed to be generational. But uh, those are my thoughts on it. G, you have anything else, man? Nah, man, I'm good. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll open up the phone lines one more time, see if we get any Caleb calls, and then we will uh, shut it down for the night. 904-219-8264, 904-219-8264. 904-219-8264, 904-219-8264. It's in the chat and it's scrolling on the bottom of the screen. Go ahead, give us a call and um, give us your thoughts on this whole Caleb Williams and the Bears drama. Um, yeah, we'd love to hear what you got to say about that. Quick side note, G, I, I just saw uh, something else came across my timeline here. It's an article that says, Lakers take puzzling G League approach with Bronny James. We're not yeah, gonna go back. To that topic, about, but. Yeah, I was reading something about them um benching uh what's the name last game last night? And like Ooh. the fourth quarter, and uh there's like talks of them um trading him, D'Angelo Russell. Oh uh, listen, nothing would surprise me with the Lakers at this point, man. Nothing but would. I got I gotta check on the source. I ain't too sure about the source. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Could be clickbait. Could be. But like I said, with, with the Lakers at this point, nothing would surprise me, man. Oh, Wemby had 50 tonight? Okay, okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Oh, okay. Listen, Wemby got skills, man, but he need to chill with all these threes. He really does. That's so annoying. Um. Okay, Grizz and the Lakers playing right now. All right, all right. Okay, Celtics won. Needed that. Good. Um, look like oh, that's he it. You put fifty on the Spurs. Yeah, I think that's it. I don't think we're gonna get any calls on this topic, so we'll go ahead and we will stop it right here for all of you who uh, joined us tonight. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much for joining. For all of you who uh, clicked that like button, I appreciate it. We got more likes than people in the chat right now, so that's how we like to see it, man. I appreciate that as well. Um, we will be what's tonight? Wednesday night. We'll be back. Um. Saturday night, Saturday night, yeah, um, yeah, Saturday night. Um, I should be dropping a college football show in the next day or two, so look out for that. If you're a college football fan, gotta get with my guy Ryan, and we'll go ahead and get that taken care of and uh, <laughs> and get uh, get that out for you. But um, again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, make sure you're back with us on Saturday night at seven, and also uh, make sure you um, continue to share the show we really appreciate that as well so we are going to leave it right here and we out peace